Greetings fans, hyper fans and people just lost looking for videos of cats on YouTube. Today we are looking at character options, new attempt at doing the Doctor Who figures, the 3 and 3 quarter inch. Now, I have to say before I start, I am prejudiced because I do not like these figures. I've collected the five and a half inch scale since they released them, I've got some of the classic stuff, I've got some of the modern stuff. But these, I really do feel, are just a letdown. Now, I did actually want to have a play with these before I really slagged them off. Didn't want to part with any money for them. So luckily, a friend of mine has lent me a few of these figures just to have a look at. Let's see, we've got Matt Smith's 11th Doctor. We've got Clara Oswald, who... If I can get her to stand up, okay. We have an Ice Warrior, a Cyberman, and of course a Dalek. I'm just going to clear these other figures away though because these two I've actually still got versions of in the five and a half inch figures and I can compare like for like and take it from there. But before I do that I just want to bring in one other figure just to show you that it's not purely the fact that they're three and three quarter inches that I'm disliking about these figures and that three and three quarter inches can be done well. Um, here we have one of the absolute classic three and three quarter inch lines, Star Wars, and one of the best figures, Darth Vader. This is from Hasbro's Black Line series, which is hyper detailed, hyper mobile, and these are really good figures. This cost me about ten pounds compared to the eight pounds that I'd be spending on these Doctor Who figures. So for that two pounds, that difference in quality is pretty phenomenal. Now if I just move these guys out of the way and we'll just have a look at the Matt Smith figure to start with. Um, let's see if I can get him a little bit closer to the camera without... You know what? There's no point in trying to get this figure into focus because... I mean, I don't know who painted that and what kind of a dungeon they've been kept in so they've never seen a human face in the light before, but that's absolutely dreadful. Um, that's not a representation of Matt Smith, that's a bad copy of some bad fan art that they may have found on DA when drunk at four o'clock in the morning and realizing they had to knock together this figure before Toy Fair. Um, there's no detailing on the cloth, the accessory has got like three different dip layers and that's it. Um, the hair is textured rather than sculpted. It, it's just a really bad figure. Um, and somebody parted with money for this. Now, if I can work out some way to stand both of these up, uh, this is the five and a half inch figure, by the way. And if I can get him to stand, um, obviously not. Um, I mean, if you just look at these two figures, you couldn't believe that they were supposed to be the same actor, let alone the same character. Um, this one is dreadful. Um, there's nothing else I can really say about him. The five and a half inch figures at least look like they're representing a human, or in this point, a Gallifreyan. Um, those figures that aren't human though, the Cyberman, the Ice Warrior, the Dalek, they're not bad. For what they are, they're kind of cool, and I love the fact that they actually scale a little bit better than the 5.5 inch figures, because you can play around with plastic. If you're saving that much money making these that much smaller, then some of the figures you can get away with making 
a good head taller. Um, I'd really like to think that this isn't just a money-making scheme by character options, but with little figures like this, you can afford to produce the big action sets, which you couldn't with these ones. I like the fact that you can now use your Doctor Who figures with your G.I. Joes, your Star Wars figures, everything that came up at that size class. What I don't like is the fact that I'm going to have to go back and rebuy all of my action figures again in this smaller size if I want a big matching set. The, they have done these big sealed boxes of all 11 Doctors, and now that Capaldi's come along, I'm either going to have to rebuy everything as the minifigures, pay San Diego Comic Con prices for a 5.5 inch Capaldi, or just give up on that. Um, it's a way of rinsing toy collectors, it's a way of getting kids to beg their parents to buy the more expensive toys. And it's annoying. And if you're going to be doing something like that, at least produce good action figures. I mean, this is really subpar. I'm sorry. But ultimately, people vote with their pockets. If you like these toys, go out and buy them. If you don't, find something better to buy. I not saying that these are the worst Doctor Who toys ever produced. I mean, there were some god-awful things produced by Dapole before character options got the rights. So, again, make your own decisions. So, signing off from a very rare review of a bad toy, um, what else can I say? Apart from, if you're keeping them in the package, you're not a toy collector, you're a box collector. See you next time.